Hi everybody, it's Paul from Wicked Acorn, and this is a message from Manchester. If you've been following us, you'll remember the Sail Charter video. It's a wonderful film about Sail in 1935, stored at the Northwest Film Archive. It has some stunning footage of places you'll know, and some that are no more. But we're trying to find all these locations and do a sort of then and now tribute. Now I'm sure there are lots of videos we can do this about, but sale is near and dear to my heart. Perhaps more nearer than dear because I live here and it's a bit cheaper than the city centre. But we've had a few responses to our call out to try and identify the locations. So we go now to our Mank in the Street reporter, Rick Ainsworth, who's in sale right now at one of the locations. Thank you, Paul. And to our couple of viewers, Bill Sumner and Tony Oliver, we think we have located one of the more difficult locations. Around 8.13 in the video, the mayor and mace bearer are climbing into a car by an old stone wall. We believe this wall is in fact this bridge which I'm standing on, which is over Sydenham Brook on the A56, on the border between Sale and Altrincham. It was the custom in the past for mayor and other officials to walk the boundaries of the town once a year to make them legal and record them officially. This is what the Charter Mail would be acting out and briefly visible of the black and white timber buildings of the Pelican behind me. At this moment in time, we don't know the fate of what the Pelican is going to be, but I hope it stays part of the community. Imagine all the weddings that have took place in there, all the receptions, all the derbies. You know, it was a focal part of the community. And if you check out a link in the, at the bottom of the description, you'll see a link that will show you all the pubs in sale that have sadly disappeared and the Pelican being one of them. And there's a great story about uh, a ghost on there. So please have a look and like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks, Rick. I think we can safely tick that one off the list. And thanks again to Tony Ollier and Bill Sumner for correctly identifying that location. Be sure to drop us a line if you can identify any of the locations in this video. And check out Rick's video, Last Orders on Sale and Altrigham's Historic Pubs. Welcome to Sale in Greater Manchester, one of the many towns affected by this problem that is plaguing the nation. This man, like many others in his situation, suffers from a drinking problem. He is suffering from a condition that's been diagnosed as stupidity. The scientists at Acorn University have solved this problem with the invention of a new space age product called Mug. Mug comes in many different styles and holds a variety of liquids. You can help this man through this current crisis by purchasing a mug on his website. Yes, look at him now. Doesn't he look happy? Good luck, stupid man. May the force be with you. It's just passed us by this week, and you may find the origin of the phrase a little surprising. We all know May the Fourth gets its origin from the line of dialogue in Star Wars A New Hope, the first film, released by Lucas in 1977. General Dodonna encourages the rebel fighters before they begin their assault on the Death Star. Then man your ships and may the force be with you. But the first recorded use of May the Force Be With You was on May 4th, 1979, when Margaret Thatcher took office as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Members of Thatcher's Conservative Party published full-page advertisements in the London Evening News congratulating the new Prime Minister, which read, May the Force Be With You, Maggie. And doesn't the Iron Lady sound a little like a Star Wars character? Might even be C-3PO's girl. Well, the results of the election are coming in, and no doubt we'll be hearing more about that. But here's a few thoughts I had as I went to vote yesterday. The other day was Karl Marx's birthday, and I posted my video about Engels and Marx on Facebook. <laughs> it sparked some lively debate, and that's a good thing. We should argue about these things. It seems that we're divided into at least three camps on it, though. Probably on most things, for that matter. Those that want a silk line casket, those that want to be organ donors, and those that think they're going to live forever, so it really doesn't matter. We've had a lot of different forms of government over the years, and you could say we've come a long way from Broad 
being the biggest and strongest, so he's in charge, to what we have now. It's only been a few hundred years since we could first exercise the right to vote. Less for over half of us. I, I just dropped my ballot off. I was gonna vote by mail, but I forgot, so I just dropped it off at the polling station. Now, by the time you see this, the election will be over, but I don't know who won. But, you know, even if there's been a complete flipping of every candidate from red to blue and vice versa, I'm sure there's probably not that much change because, as they say, they're all alike. So why should we bother to vote at all? Well, because the wheels of progress turn. That's right, someone at the back. Slowly, the wheels of progress turn slowly. It's been a long time since Broad held a seat. You'll probably not live long enough to see real change, but change will happen. It's the only constant. You could say the only thing you can count on is not being able to count on anything. So as we head back to the polls, or should I say as we head back from the polls, it doesn't matter who you vote for, so long as you vote. Remember, if you don't vote, you don't have the right to complain. No, wait a minute. You always have the right to complain. The right to complain was hard won. People have died for the right to complain. It's as British as fish and chips and mushy peas. And what's up with the mushy peas, boys? What I meant to say was, if you don't vote, we don't have to listen to your complaining. It's a long road to where all the nations of the world live in peace, like in Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek. But exercising your right to vote gets us just a little bit closer. The NHS spends one billion pounds a year treating people with asthma. Breath Champs came from the imagination of award-winning Queen's nurse, Heather Henry. She's developed the most entertaining way to teach children how to manage their asthma. Songs, stories, poems, and puppet shows are only a few of the tools Heather and her friends use to make kids aware of asthma. Breath Champs helps children's families, communities, and services that work with them to learn about asthma. I spoke with Heather a while ago, and we'll leave you with a sneaky peek at that chat. Keep your eyes peeled for the full interview coming here soon. I'm Paul from Wicked Acorn, and this has been A Message from Manchester. Manchester, and we're here with Heather, Heather Henry, and Hi. tell us a little bit about yourself, Heather. Um, I'm from Sale, most importantly. Oh, well, welcome to Sale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Sale, too. That's right. Um, nurse from Sale, and um, I've had asthma all my life, and I want to help the whole of the community of Sale to understand child asthma and to support and look after children with asthma in fun ways if we can right yeah. so how did how did just you get interested in this oh when i was little i had really bad asthma and uh, it used to trouble me every night and i grew up quite anxious and underconfident and missing a lot of school uh, and then when i grew up i had um, a ma major problem with my lungs ended up having two-thirds of them removed down the road with an, uh, no it was a, a MRI and um, so at 21 I had only one and a third lungs so complications to do with asthma and so I've been really breathless all my life uh, went into general management in the NHS and then when I was made redundant decided to work for myself and met some children and families in Eccles uh, who had asthma and started having asthma parties. Asthma parties. <laughs> That's right. Um, to help children and families to understand their asthma. And here we are in Sale, seeing if we can make Sale the country's first child asthma friendly town. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs>